I would like to give a special thank you to that 90s kid for recommending this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Once again, Rockstar has striked and ran off like a thief in the night. And if you don't get it, it's okay, as this will be my fifth video in a series and about 50% of the game belonged to Rockstar. A weird comparison too, because in this case, the thief still left you a great gift. That gift being in this case, Ella Noir, a mystery solving sandbox game developed by Team Bondi and published by Rockstar. The game is set in a perfectly recreated city of Los Angeles in 1947. And it's probably one of those game of Rockstar if not maybe the only game where you're not a gangster or an affiliate of a crime family. The game has many different mechanics of other Rockstar games combined within, like the driving mechanics from GTA series, the fighting from Bully, and I can surely say that the game was ahead of its time due to technology used during development. I would even go as far to say it's the other side of the coin to Mafia Definitive Edition, in terms of quality and in terms of good and evil. Also, that's kind of a high bar if you keep in mind that Mafia was released in 2020, while this game was released in 2011. But anyways, it was a long development process taking over 7 years to complete, starting in 2004. Initially, Sony had the rights to this game as the contract was between them and Team Bondi, but the publishing rights landed in Rockstar hands in 2006, which would turn out to be a good thing for both studios, mixing resources from Team Bondi and Rockstar and of course their sub-companies. Ella Noir would go on to have a long development but the accolades acquired by the game was far beyond what many games will ever receive, with high range from every critics and crowned possibly one of the best storyline that Rockstar has ever produced which make the two studio look like a match made in heaven and people could expect more and better next release. But of course, wherever there is good, there's usually a lot of skeletons in the closet. Like many disgruntled ex-employees of Team Bondi launching a website with over 100 names that were not either included or was incorrectly listed in official credits of the game. Things will even go as far as confidential emails being leaked which contains not so satisfying comments about both studios relationship. If that doesn't say enough, there was even a remastered version released for the Nintendo Switch, PS4 and Xbox One, but now with Team Bondi instead with Vertuso. But as far as future plans have went for part 2 or sequel, not much is really announced. There were statements of the next game being developed much faster due to technology advancement. But right after LA Noir released, Team Bondi would close down and most of their assets would be purchased by KMM Interactive Entertainment. Even some of their ex-employees would shift over to this company, who would go on to work on a game called Hole of the Orient, which quote unquote would be flung around as the spiritual successor to LA Noir. Whatever th whatever that's supposed to mean. Anyways, nobody will go on to witness this successor because it would be cancelled not too long after announcement. Even Rockstar on the other hand would throw rumors of how a sequel wasn't ruled out as there is possibility of it and of course how important the game was to them. But one big obstacle in my personal opinion would be first they will have to overcome the death of the main character before structuring a story either around him or a possible successor, not of course not being no pun intended but who really knows as these are all just ideas being flung around but let's keep la noir in our prayers for some time in the future and don't forget to subscribe and comment any game that didn't get a sequel and you would like to see feature in the next video of this series of what happened to that game and i'll catch you in the next video don't forget to subscribe